The next transformation we're going to do is stretching. And as with the other transformations, I think that uh, the vertical stretching is a little more intuitive. So uh, let's begin with this example. And let's take a look at our basic function, g of x, which is equal to the square root of x. So we're going to go ahead and graph that. And the pink line reflects, again, our original square root function, which we've labeled g of x. Next, let's take a look at the uh, function f of x, which is 2 times the square root of x. And so every y value is going to be doubled. So if we were to take a look at the origin doubling, that will give the y value also a value of 0. But when we go over to this point, when x is 1, y is 1. But when we double that, twice of 1 gives us a y value of 2. When we go over to the point 4, 2, we double that y value of 2, and it becomes 4. So now when we draw this graph, we can see that it looks taller. And this, again, is the function that is represented by f of x. In addition to doubling the height, we can also cut the height in half. And so if you take a look at h of x, this is equal to 1 half times the square root of x. And if we look at individual points, we can draw them in another color. But if we use uh, g of x as our reference, when x is equal to 1, y originally was equal to 1, but when we cut it in half, then y is equal to a half. If we look at this point over here, when x was equal to 2, y was equal to 4, but, or when x was equal to 4, y was equal to 2, but when we cut that in half, then y is equal to 1, and we get this graph. So again, we can see that multiplying by a larger number that's greater than 1 will cause the graph to become taller, and uh, multiplying by a fraction, which is less than 1, will cause the graph to become shorter. Something very similar happens when we look at the absolute value graph. So here we've got g of x, which is equal to the absolute value of x. So here's our g of x. And if we want to draw f of x, each of the y values is doubled. So at this point over here, when x is equal to 2, y is equal to 2 for the g of x, but if we double that, it becomes 4 for f of x. And we've got a point here. If we double this point, when y is equal to 6 for g of x, then y is equal to 12 for f of x, and the line becomes much steeper. So you can see that the y values for f of x are doubled in height as compared with the y values for g of x. Next, when we take a look at h of x, h of x is equal to 1 half absolute value of x. And as we would expect, the y values are cut in half, and the graph becomes shorter. So when x is equal to 2, the uh, g of x value, absolute value of 2, is equal to 2. But half of that is 1. So that's our h of x, which is 1 half absolute value of x. And we've got a point at 2, 1. If we could go over here, when x is equal to 6, absolute value of 6 is equal to 6, but half of that is equal to 3. And we have a point here. And so as you can see, our graph for h of x is half as tall as the uh, graph that we had drawn for g of x. So again, if we have some multiplier greater than 1, it stretches the function vertically, makes it taller. If we have some fraction, uh, c is some number between 0 and uh, 1, then it causes the graph to become shorter and it shrinks it. The last time type of stretching that we're going to talk about is horizontal stretching. And Horizontal stretching is perhaps a little bit counterintuitive, but what we find is that if we multiply the x on the inside of the parentheses, we don't 
stretch it to make it wider, we actually make it narrower. And so here it says for c greater than 1, that means a multiplier greater than 1, such as 2, it actually shrinks f of x horizontally and makes it narrower. So when we want to graph f of 2x, we are going to get a graph that's narrower. So you can see that this function covers half of the horizontal distance as the original function, and yet it goes through its uh, period or its uh, up and down cycle in a shorter distance. The contrast to that is f of 1 half x, and that's going to stretch f of x horizontally, that is to make it wider. So it'll look like this function. And so you can see that the function becomes wider. And I know that this may seem counterintuitive because when we were doing vertical stretching, a larger coefficient next to the function caused it to be taller. And in this case, uh, we are not getting wider, but we're getting narrower. However, um, if you were to plot some points, you could see that you could verify this fact that it does actually cause it to uh, shrink horizontally with a large coefficient and stretch horizontally with a uh, smaller coefficient. Now, if we take a look at this example, we've got uh, our original function, the square root of x, and let's go ahead and graph that. And if we take a look at the other function, f of x, which is the square root of 4x, we can see that 4 is right next to the x. And what has happened here is we can actually simplify that for f of x is equal to for f of x is equal to the square root of uh, 4x. We can take the square root of the coefficient 4 and pull it to the outside, and that becomes 2 times the square root of x. And so now we are actually back to the function that we had graphed previously, which um, is doubled in height. But we were talking about horizontal stretching, not vertical stretching. And so when we look at this graph compared to the other, taller means narrower. Next, if we take a look at the function h of x, which is equal to 1 fourth of x, we can again simplify this and say that h of x is equal to uh, the square root of 1 fourth is 1 half on the outside, but then the square root of x still remains on the inside. And like the other graph, this is g of x, but its height is half of the original. And so now, again, when we think about this in terms of horizontal rather than vertical stretching, it is true, yes, that h of x is shorter, but it's also more stretched out horizontally, and so it's become wider. And we can see that this is what we're expecting for a fraction which is less than 1.